If you have seen our recent videos, then you should already know a lot about Raspberry Pi 5. But something that we've only briefly touched on so far are the Raspberry Pi 5 accessories. There will be some cool new stuff for Raspberry Pi 5, so stay tuned to learn more. When it comes to power management, Raspberry Pi 5 is on a whole new level. The Raspberry Pi 5 power adapter has an input range of 100 to 240 VAC. The new 27 watt USB-C PD power supply will deliver a maximum of 5 amperes at 5.1 volts, enabling your Raspberry Pi 5 to power a wider range of peripherals than previous models. The total power drawn from all four USB ports on Raspberry Pi 5 is limited by default to a nominal 600 milliamps. When your Pi detects the new power supply, then it automatically increases this limit to a nominal 1.6 amperes. The 27W USB-C power supply is also capable of delivering 3 amps at 9 volts, 2.25 amps at 12 volts, and 1.8 amps at 15 volts to PD compatible products. This makes it a cost-effective power supply for many general-purpose use cases, not just for your Raspberry Pi. For example, you could charge your phone with it. And one thing I've always appreciated about Raspberry Pi is how long the power cables are. The official Pi 5 cable is 1.2 meters long, which is almost 4 feet. The new case looks very similar to the official Raspberry Pi 4 case, but it has some important upgrades. First of all, it dissipates heat more effectively, accommodating the higher temperatures of the new model. Furthermore, it integrates a fan that can run at different speeds and is powered and controlled from a connector on board near the USB ports. And on top of that, the fan was specifically re-engineered to be much quieter than the fan which chip for the Pi 4. Not only that, the new cases are stackable, so you'll be able to store multiple Raspberry Pi 5s and even build a Pi cluster. Also something worth mentioning is that the new PoE Plus head for Raspberry Pi 5 will be able to fit inside the case with the fan and the cover. Unfortunately, because the Pi 5 has reversed the order of the USB ports and the Ethernet port, there's no way you're going to be able to use your Pi 4 case. At launch, you can get your hands on the classic Raspberry Pi red and white color scheme, but you'll have to wait if you want an official case that's black and gray. Raspberry Pi will roll those out at some point in the future. Of course, if you don't want to get a case or your application doesn't require a case, you can also get an active cooler, which is a combination of a fan and a heatsink. Just like the fan in the case, the Pi 5 powers and controls the active cooler via the fan connector on the board. It attaches to the Raspberry Pi 5 PCB via sprung pins into a pair of mounting holes. Indeed, that's also a new addition to the Pi 5. Two mounting holes, specifically for fans. We're sure to see a number of third-party add-ons also make use of these mounting holes. But I want to really stress the fact that Raspberry Pi 5 runs hot. So you're really going to need to think about cooling, and here the case or the active cooler are probably your best bets. We finally have a real-time clock on a Raspberry Pi. On top of that, it's an RTC that can wake up your Pi from sleep mode and it's programmable. Raspberry Pi 5 integrates the RTC through the power management IC and charging circuitry from a button cell, which can power the clock if the main power loses its connection. On top of that, for the RTC, Raspberry Pi is selling a rechargeable battery, the Panasonic ML2020 Lithium Manganese Dioxide Battery. It comes with a two-pin plug that connects directly to the battery connector on the board, as well as a double-sided adhesive pad. Therefore, you can easily attach it to the inside of a case or wherever you see fit. Along with the RTC, there's a totally new camera and display setup. Raspberry Pi 5 provides two four-lane MIPI connectors. Each of these can support either a camera serial interface or a display serial interface. These connectors make use of the same 22-way 0.5mm pitch mini FPC format as the Raspberry Pi Zero. So you will need to get your hands on adapter cables to connect to the 15-way 1mm pitch standard format connectors for current camera and display products. You will be able to find adapter cables at different lengths, specifically 200mm, 300mm and 500mm. These cables are able to be so long because they have really great shielding. One drawback though is that you won't be able to use camera cables for the display and display cables for the camera. For the time being, designated cables have to connect to their designated ports.
but what you gain are new 4-lane MIPI connectors that will allow a whole host of stereoscopic applications. To go along with the new flagship product, there's also a new Raspberry Pi 5 PoE Plus head. Unfortunately, this means that your old Pi 4 PoE Plus head isn't going to work with your Raspberry Pi 5. This is because of the physical layout and power requirements of the new model. But, as I mentioned above, you'll be able to use the new PoE Plus head inside the new case. In addition to the PoE Plus head, Raspberry Pi has announced the Raspberry Pi 5 M.2 head. This supports the connection of M.2 format PCIe and NVMe devices to the PCIe FPC connector on board. However, it's important to mention that the M.2 head is M key only, so it won't work with other keys. And that's everything we know about Raspberry Pi 5's accessories so far. But if you know Raspberry Pi, you'll know that there's likely more to follow. Leave a comment which Pi 5 accessories you would love to see. Also make sure to like and subscribe for more Raspberry Pi 5 content. You can't wait to get the latest news about Raspberry Pi 5? Check out our BiZero and Pi Cockpit newsletters, which I linked below. And with that said, thanks for watching and until next time.